I use this presentation to introduce my uh, research question and topic for my essay. Um, my topic is storytelling in video games. And I have the uh, research question, how does the storytelling in video games influence the game and vice versa. And then I have some sub-questions which will also help to structure this presentation. Um, first, we will look at the importance of stories in video games and briefly uh, discuss the ludology versus narratology discussion. Um, then we look at the gamer within the story, how the gamer influences the story and how the story can influence the gamer. We do the same with story and gameplay. The story obviously influences the gameplay and vice versa again. And lastly we'll be looking at the storytelling techniques that may differ from other media that tell stories like novels and films and stuff like that. So um, I was reading this uh, essay from, by Marku Asclinian. This is quite dated, but it was really interesting. Um, he argues that uh, games cannot be art, and he concludes with this quote, um, in this scenario, stories are just uninteresting ornaments or gift wrappings to games, and laying an, any emphasis on studying, studying these kinds of marketing tools is just a waste of time and energy. This is quite an ominous statement <laughs> to start with your uh, research about storytelling in video games. But I, I still think it's really interesting, so I just kept on going. And first, um, to tackle the ludology versus narratology discussion, I thought we should start with looking at what we're trying to describe. And um, I think it's important to define um, the, the words we use in this discussion. Like narrative, I define narrative for now as a series of events, uh, experience or the like, whether true or fictitious. And then um, I define a story as follows, a form of narrative, um, either true or fictitious, in prose or verse, so it has a, a kind of form, and it's designed to interest, so it has more of a purpose than a narrative has from itself. Um, like, the bird, the, the game flagging bird, um, you can argue it has a narrative, but I wouldn't argue it has a story that's uh, designed to interest or amuse the gamer. While a game like uh, Telltale Walking Dead, it's all about the story and the, the gamer is like, um, motivated to play because of the story. Um, to conclude that, um, I don't think stories are necessary, and, but they can be an addition and they can be really enjoyable and that's enough reason for me to look at them and study them. Uh, moving on to the gamer within the story. Um, as I said, the story can be a motivation to play for a game like Amnesia and the Word the Dark Descent. Um, I'm not willing to throw myself in these depths without having the motivation to uncover some kind of story or mystery. But the, um, the story is not necessary for a game like Five Nights at Freddy's. It relies more on being a challenge to motivate players to play the game. Um, what's quite unique about uh, games is that the gamer has uh, sort of control of view, a viewpoint within the story. And um, another cri critic um, says that this is exactly why stories are not um, meant to be told by video games because it gives the gamer uh, control. And in this uh, quote by Roger Ebert, um, I did indeed not consider video games inherently uh, inferior to film and literature. There is a structural reason for that. Video games, by their nature, require player choices, which is the opposite of the strategy of serious film and literature, which requires authorial control. 
So I, I kind of see the point he's, he's getting at. As a gamer, you have an influence on the story, and therefore it's you make the story instead of the story being made for you. But I think there is authority or control in video games. You have things you can't do and the story will sometimes always end up end the same way. And you, in terms of gameplay, you can't kill this kid, for example. So that's kind of some sort of authority or control. <laughs> Um, but the critics again describe these as rules and score you can uh, get and that defines what a video game is. Um, nonetheless, I think they are forms of authority or control. So, however you name them, they are still authority. Um, then we have two different kinds of stories in video games. Well, a lot of different kinds, but you can get them. Define them as linear and non-linear. Linear being the story is um, in you, you can't influence the story. It has a beginning, it has an end, and you just go through the story. Non-linear being something like Skyrim, where you can have side quests and can even choose uh, choose sides and divine the or decide the outcome of the story. Games like Call of Duty have mostly have a linear story where you don't have side quests and you can't influence the story in any way. Um, with games like Skyrim, when you want to tell a story, you, you, have, you need characters, you need NPCs, and when they play an important role, they are often immortal, or uh, the game is over when you die, or you simply can't continue that part of the story. which all affect the gameplay uh, and the experience the gamer has within the game. And this kind of can be disrupting to the flow of the story and the gameplay. If you have, for instance, an NPC uh, who dies constantly and therefore you can't continue the story or you keep uh, losing. Um, and then for a, from a writer's perspective, um, gameplay influences the story a lot as well. You have a lot of games where um, developers have certain aspects of gameplay they want to implement into the story, like a multiplayer, uh, certain character moves that are uh, typical to a certain video game, which will define in what way the story will. What where the story will go. I mean, uh, what we see in the last decade a lot is sandbox games where you have a lot of freedom, and this freedom again um, results in disrupting the story that the writer is trying to convey. So the writing ha writer has a lot of problems uh, trying to convey a story if the gameplay moves a certain way. And this leads me to believe that gameplay and story are kind of separate things. And they, while they influence they, each other um, a lot, they seem, never seem like working together. Um, looking, at the, looking at techniques a game can, uh, can use is, it, it, it's, a lot like films, you have the audio, the visual contents, you even have cutscenes. But you can also implement literature, you can implement huge pieces of text to tell the story. There's textual games as well, but to me personally, this is always a nuisance and I just try to skip everything as fast as possible. Um, and then, Looking at the techniques that any story uses, perspective, narrative, protagonists, and the way you use them and, um, can be really influential to the story. And this is where games have a unique aspect because the gamer can interact and can have control to a certain extent, which is really interesting. Um, so the question that pops up to me is how can game designers create a balance between story and gameplay experience? And um, 
taking into account that the gamer controls a certain viewpoint or even the outcome of the story. But we can, t we can also say that the game designers control the information they give the uh, gamer. So that's something we can work with. And I, have, I want to research whether we can tell a more fluent story by more subtle information placement through visual, audio and gameplay to make it have um, a sort of flow. And that's my presentation. Thank you. And what you're speaking about here is, is really a multimodal storytelling, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And is this a new form of storytelling? Because we see similar elements here, authorial control, limited player choices. What are the differences there? Yeah. You know? And we see it in literature as well. That's why I mentioned Finnegan's Wake by Joyce, James Joyce. There's a type of gameplay going on there. Totally, throughout it, right from the first sentence. You know? Yeah, I think we have a, it's a, a really new way of telling historians. Like every new media, it's getting a lot of negative like, uh, critiques mm. and I think that too we can make it into something that's um, mm. not necessarily a better way of telling a story but another way just like literature and mm. films mm. are different from each other. Mm. I'm not saying one of them is better but it's just another experience it's different. so why not research it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Questions, comments? Do you feel there's an inherent um, conflict in, um, in sandbox games and open world games like that between the designers of like, the gameplay who are trying to make it so that it's fun to just explore the world and the designers of the story who want you to just sit down and play through the story and experience that? Do you feel there's a conflict between those, between like, trying to make sure that they, they're not too tempted to roam off and just ignore the story? But also, like, make the story engaging enough that they'll actually want to do it. Yeah, that's exactly what I think, because um, I looked at the short speech by Tom Bissell on a GDC conference, mm -hmm. and he, he was a writer on Gears of War, and he explains how he had to keep changing the story to make it fit with what the game designers wanted, to, and the level designers wanted, so mm. it's it's, it never seems to be one uh, thing together, but two separate things kind of working along each other. Um, what are your thoughts on kind of, uh, I'm going to use the word meta stories here, kind of stories that the games don't exactly tell but are contained in? Like you were talking about Five Nights at Freddy's not having a story, but there is actually a, yeah. there's a really big story there through all those kind of games, but it's not kind of told directly to you. You have to, uh, you, the community have to dig in, kind of piece the strings together. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought Five Nights at Freddy might have something like that. I didn't. I haven't played it, but um, I think those kind of stories might um, be the kind of direction we should go in in terms of telling stories through video games. The more subtle, more, mysteri more mysterious placements. Of kind of abstract. Yeah, you know? more abstract. You, mm. you, you don't necessarily create the story. It's already kind of there, but you uncover it yourself. Mm -hmm. We'll let you go then. Thank you.